Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road, and in this video, I am sharing my three most important tips to consider when you are reorganizing or organizing your craft area. I totally just finished uh, reorganizing, and so I'm going to share with you the three things that really help me stay focused. Now, there is no way I would love to go through and open up all the drawers for you on this video and show you everything. Um, I did still pictures instead because then I can spend more time. It would take way too long in a video. So head over to the blog at sandpaperroad.com uh, slash blog. And actually, I'll put a link below and you can head over there and see all the details. I pull out all the drawers and you can look that way. But for now, I'm going to stick to the top three things that will help you stay focused when you're organizing. And the first is to keep focus of the size of your storage containers. I know that might not be like a super exciting tip to share, but it really, really matters. Um, especially, you know, as crafters, we work with sizes of things specifically. So it's important for you to consider the size of the containers you already have, unless you're starting from scratch and trying to figure out what it is you're going to buy. Now I'm going to share uh, one example that was uh, crucial in my reorganization. And it was this uh, storage container thing right here. Um, I used to have in it, because I sit with my back facing this way. And so I used to have in it my punches and my adhesives, my backup adhesives, and then uh, what did I have up here? Envelopes and business cards and things like that. And that was where I liked to reach for it. But um, I realized that that container is 12 by 12, or it's bigger than 12 by 12, so it can hold 12 by 12. Now, coming up in the very near future, um, Sandpaper Road is going to be a um, distributor of Craft O'Clock products here in the United States. So they are made out of Poland, and if you like Craft O'Clock products, or if you've never seen them before, you can check them out in the link below. But I needed a place to store them that didn't get out of control. So this is where I put the Craft O'Clock products for now. I'm probably going to have to upgrade. This is just design team stuff for now. And now you can see, well, that's stuff I've already started working on. It holds 12 by 12 paper much easier. So that's one thing um, that was really important is like I never, I had that container for years and I never took the time to measure to see if it was big enough to hold 12 by 12 paper. Isn't that ridiculous? Why didn't I just measure it? Um, the other thing is on that same thing, speaking of uh, paper containers is, or I mean containers for paper, is up there. That is also 12 by 12. And that little plastic thing, that was only like $7 and I bought it with a coupon years ago. And those are pages that are done, um, but still need to go in albums or they're getting ready to be gifted, like for gift albums or something. So I need them stored, but I don't need them in my way. Like I don't need to access them every single day or when I'm crafting, but I do need a place for 12 by 12 stuff to lay sort of in waiting until I'm done with the whole album or ready to put it into a gift album or whatever. So um, that I, I needed 12 by 12 storage for that and behind me, but I don't want to swivel around uh, too crazy because I don't want to make you car sick. Um, is more of this kind of thing on the top also. Now these other things that I was trying to use for paper or whatever, if it's not 12 by 12, then I then I can put whatever I want in it. So just considering the size of the container, I think is, uh, is really, really important. I'm gonna back up here um, so you can see. And if you're wondering, <laughs> like my area is a it's a nice perfect size area for me right now where I'm at in my life um, you can hear there's a lot of racket going on outside so uh, just don't mind the the racket I have the windows open it's a nice day and I live in Amish country so you'll hear a lot of probably buggies and horses the second most important tip to keep in mind when you are organizing is where do you want to reach for it? 
where do you want to reach for it? Now, to explain, I think I'm gonna take you um, over to my desk, I think, for that. Okay, where do you want to reach for it? Now, when I sit at my desk, this is my view. I sit right here, and then uh, when I'm filming, I have a little overhead thing that just clips to a picture, and I put my phone right there, and I shoot that way. And so here are all the things that I do on a, that I reach for on, like, when I sit down to make anything. Now these, here's what's funny. These two things um, I had, this is exactly how I had it. I had paints and sprays and storage stuff and this kind of thing. And I had them all stacked on top of each other. Um, over there on this shelf where we just were. I'm gonna try to go slow so you don't get car sick. I say that because I get car sick. See, now that right there, I had these two, just how that is is how I had it. And those are paints and inks and they're, they're like backups that I don't reach for every single day, but if I run out of something, I wanna be able to get to it. Um, but forever, I was like, getting up out of my chair to reach for these paints all the time pull it out and I'd be like oh didn't I have a surface spray here or didn't I have a this spray or didn't I have this paint and so um inks I thought why don't I just put that on my table I'm always reaching for it so this is all the stuff I reach for all 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 the time including my reading glasses and basic oh I'll tell you about this in a second basic like pieces of just randomness paper little strips of cardstock, white cardstock. Um, this I found when I was doing my sticker sort and I thought, you know, I would use those more if I just reached for it, if I had a spot where I could see it and reach for it. So this is out of my way and because it's clear, I'll be like, what is that? And then I'll remember to reach for it. I can't do that with everything, but yeah, that I am. So adhesives, black and white paint for sure, uh, stamp cleaner, and then I believe I have a stamp uh, pad back here. Um, yeah, I do a stamp pad back here and, um, yeah, just basics. Now here I have, um, four ink blending tools and water undo adhesive, um, my pokey tool and all these things, pencil sharpener, my Xyron, my little Xyron and acrylic blocks I keep back here. Um, because, and here, this is again, where do I want to reach for it? These used to be up on my shelf and I was forever trying, I even put the one I use the most right here because I use it to weigh down stuff. If I make or glue something, I just put this on top of it quick, um, while I'm getting ready for something else and it holds it down. Um, and I was reaching for it and reaching for it and getting up every time I wanted to get to it. And I thought, why don't I just keep that on my desk? So just a little bit of reorganization for this stuff that I don't have to get up. Because my area is just a little bit tight um, this way, I don't mind it like that, but I definitely don't want to have to be getting up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down every time I want something. Um, same thing with like in here, this I will pull out, is my Distress Inks. Now, I know you. <laughs> it looks really funny because don't you see videos of people who have them like all organized like vertically and have like a little tab on the side for like the colors and everything? And I love the way that looks so much. I so wish I was that person and like over here I am that person except I'm not that person I don't even know how to explain it but like this swivels around but I don't hardly ever swivel it those are stamping up inks and these are the inks I use most so I keep it right there generally but then they're there if I need it like I can swivel it these I use on almost every single project I want to be able to open up a drawer find the ink I need. I don't have that many, so why can't I just pick it up and move it? On the bottom, I have the ink pad uh, attached with some Velcro, more ink pads in a strawberry container back there, and then I can put it onto the um, tool that's right there. So to me, that's fine. Um, yeah, also along with the where do I want to reach for it, down here is um, foam, dyes, and sticky foam. That is where I want to reach for it. I don't want to get up, definitely. I use these dies probably more than any other dies. They're just basic shape cutout dies. And um, I just, yeah, put them right there. And the same when it comes to um, mixed media stuff, gesso or um, 
you know, modeling paste or crackle paste, whatever it is, these things, I definitely don't want to have to go to some special place to, to get to it. So, uh, that's tip number two. Again, I'll pull out all the other drawers over on my blog. You can see, um, more if you're interested. And tip number three is how do you want to reach for it? How do you want to reach for it? And for that, I'm going to um, move over to my Cricut, I think, and start there. This is a great shelf, and it was given to me um, by my friend. And you might have, I want to take time to show you because you might have one of these shelves already in your house. Um, it's just a nice shelf. And this thing, these drawers down here, though, are so heavy to pull out. And so I had things in them before, like, um, I'm trying to think of what I had in them. Just like albums and certain kind of cardstock I kept and this and that because, you know, that was funny sizes or whatever. But to pull them out was so, so, so heavy. And then this pops down, okay? Do you know what I'm talking about? Now, here's what I wanted to happen. I wanted my Cricut. I have a original Cricut and then I have a Cricut expression and I use both of them very often um, but one I it's hard to explain like I used to have it up on top of a sh up on top of the shelf and then I would get it down and use it for like two weeks or whatever and make a bunch of stuff cut a bunch of stuff and then I would put it away and climb up and put it back up there whatever and you know I thought to myself it would be awesome if I could just literally pop this thing down and there's an outlet right there and why couldn't I pop this down and get the Cricut and pull it out because in here I had a bunch of other stuff um oh I know I had a sticker binder one of those sticker binders and I would pop this down pull out the sticker binder and flip through it um so that's where the reorganization came in but now I can pull out the Cricut Here's the cords, pull out the cords, plug the plug it in, pull this out, and um, it's got a place for, I, I don't need to pull it out because you know how, how it works. Then there's a place for the mat to feed back. Um, the cartridges are there. And then up here, I have the mats right here. And if a mat gets sort of unsticky, um, I put an X on the back of it, but I don't throw it out because there's ways that you can make it uh, you can salvage it and make it sticky again, at least for a little while. So I'm happy because that's how I wanted to reach for my Cricut. I wanted to be able to pull it out, use it, plug it in, and put it back. And not have to climb all over the world to get to it. Another thing is about how I want to reach for it has to do with, um, well, I guess I'll show you. I could show you so much in this area but I'll show you these um, boxes uh, I have these here I definitely want to reach for card bases that are already pre-cut um, and embossing folders I have my so these are pre-cut card bases that I cut myself and down here all my uh, embossing folders are in there and these are cut cut apart some panels. Oh, how I deal with my scraps, because I want to be able to just pull it out and use it. So don't think that just these pretty boxes are just for finished products. You can, or finished uh, projects. Um, down, <clears throat> excuse me, down here, um, let's see. I have personal, 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 personal. I'll probably reorganize those labels, you know, maybe a little bit later, but that works for me. Um, those are the cards I make I'm going to give away. And then I have envelopes here. And, oh, this I think I redid. I used to have my flowers in strawberry containers. Um, and I put them in a box. Because, I first of all, I didn't have that many flowers. And second of all, that's how I wanted to reach for it. I didn't care to look through a strawberry container to see it. Because I thought, well, I'll just put it in a box and then get the box out and I suppose I could have done that with a strawberry container but it was taking up weird room and I just didn't want to do it that way 
So yeah, those are my three tips. Uh, like I said, I just finished uh, reorganizing my craft room. I know this was kind of abbreviated and I'm trying to rattle on them just a little bit fast because I didn't want to bore you. Um, my final thoughts for organizing your craft area, um, especially, especially if you're just starting out, is um, just get it good enough for now, quote unquote. Like, just get it to a point, get your space good enough to a point where um, it's just good enough for you for the moment. And then maybe craft for six months or a year and you're gonna learn just, if you could just do that, you'll learn what your issues are and what you need to change. But don't try to get it, don't spend too much time trying to get it so perfect. Cause my, my area changes like every year. Um, and just based on the way that I craft and my the things that change and you know um, plus you have to consider other things for you individually maybe you don't have a space like this this is literally just the back of the living room there's the back of the couch right there and that's my space so like the back I don't know quarter of the living room third of the living room do you travel or do you stay still do you have a card table that you work off of is it the dining room table do you have your own desk um, do you have to sit up or set up and put down? I mean, all those things you have to consider. So your needs are going to be totally different than somebody else's and how you reach for things, where you reach for things and the size of your storage containers are going to be different from everybody else's. So hope you enjoyed these three tips. Uh, like I said, head over to the Sandpaper Road blog and you can check out more details on my craft area and um, see what's inside all the other drawers as well. This is just a, a dresser, and I do go through and open up all the drawers and stuff in the, in the pictures. So thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, hope you had a good time watching my uh, craft room mini tour, I guess. Don't forget to subscribe to Sandpaper Road and hit that little bell down here on the bottom so that you get all the notifications, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.